So a few announcements. This Saturday, June 16th, I will be playing a show at the Silver Lake Lounge at 5 p.m. And my good friend Calixa will also be playing a set at 6 p.m. that night, so come on out. Then after that, next Thursday, I will be playing two shows for Make Music Long Beach. One show will be at 1 in the afternoon with the Shakuhachi player, Taiko player, bassoonist, uh, Shiwe Wu, and we will be playing a duo. And then later that evening at 5 p.m., I will be playing a solo set at D Piazza's in Long Beach, California. And then on Saturday, June 23rd, I will be playing a set at Portfolio Coffee House in Long Beach. And I will also be sharing that event with Calixa, so she'll play a set after me that night as well. On July 6th, I will be playing at The Graduate in Madison, Wisconsin for their Langdon Patio Series. And it'll be a solo set at 8 p.m. So come on out for any or all of those shows if you're interested. Welcome to Music in Mind with Anthony Calkins. So this episode is part two of a discussion about Cecil Taylor. In the last episode, I discussed the lack of inclusion of Cecil Taylor's music into academic canons of discourse, and there are whole lines of improvised music that music theorists and various academics in the academy have not found great ways of discussing in an intellectual manner. So in this episode, I will be attempting just that. I will propose a way of understanding and analyzing Cecil Taylor's music that can be helpful in hearing through all those notes, so to speak. So to begin, let's listen to a little bit of his large two-part improvisation called Indent. Cecil Taylor's music can sound sort of opaque or difficult to get on first listen, but I think that if you listen gesturally rather than to specific notes and harmonies, this music becomes much clearer. And this term gestural is the key word for what I'm going to propose as a good way of understanding Cecil Taylor's music. What do I mean by gesture? Basically, I mean a bit of musical material that invokes motion of some sort, which can be any piece of musical material, actually, because you can hear motion in anything, and music in and of itself requires motion in order to sound. Your particles have to be excited, and sound waves have to be propagated through the air, so there is motion embedded in all sound, and therefore in music. So depending on how you hear it, any piece of musical material could be argued as being gestural in some way. For instance, this could be a musical gesture. Or this. Or even this. When you listen to Cecil Taylor's music like this, you can hear almost a dialogue or interaction going on between discrete gestures, so to speak which evolve and come in and out of focus over time. To help explain what I'm talking about, let's listen again to a bit of Cecil Taylor's indent, but this time I will add some visual cues to help illustrate when these gestures come in and out and how they're interacting, and maybe it'll sort of clear up the music a little bit.
Of course, this is not the only way to analyze or understand this music, but I find this a useful way of hearing music like Cecil Taylor's. Thanks for watching Music in Mind. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have thoughts on this video. If you like my content generally, consider visiting my Patreon page, which has exclusive content for patrons. Thanks, and see you next time.